Welcome everybody to um, TechSoup Connect Australia chapter. Even though most of us are from overseas this morning, that's fine. Welcome everybody. So this morning we've got Kat from Kat Milner from Create Your Change is going to be uh, taking us through Canva. Um, and it's going to be a real high level introduction to it. So we're not going to deep dive really deep into uh, all the technicalities, but it's going to be just a big sweep over um, the products and how you can use it. And especially for nonprofits, if you do have any questions, please feel free to um, add them into the chat and I'll keep an eye out for them. And if they're relevant to what Kat's saying at the time, I'll, I'll uh, flag them with her and, um, we can bring them up, but yes, thank you everybody. And I'm just going to hand it over to Kat. Good morning, everybody. I am Kat Milner, founder, owner, and chief communication ninja for Create Your Change. My business specializes in working with people to become more digitally literate. And that's everything from, I work with a lot of older people to help them become more confident and comfortable with their devices and in the online world. I also work with small businesses and nonprofits to help them understand how to use the programs that they need to run their business. For example, things like Canva. So today we are going to cover a few quite we're going to try and cover a lot of ground in a very short period of time so if you do have questions or you need me to go back over or something just drop that in the chat i know i talk really fast i know my new york person will be able to keep up not so sure about everybody else so if you to, <laughs> what's, my mother has yelled at me my entire life because i've always talked too fast so if i so if that is happening just let me know and i'm more than happy to slow it down a little bit so here's our agenda for today this is a basics class. So if you are more familiar with Canva and know more advanced techniques, I love that you are into it, but I'm going to ask that you don't um, talk about advanced techniques in the chat because there are probably some newer people on the call today and we just don't want to confuse people. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tour of Canva and show you some of the different things that are at your disposal to use. We're going to cover templates and how to use those, how to find photos or upload photos. We're also going to talk about elements, how to search for things, how to use text, and briefly how to post to Facebook. And then I'll give you my top three tips to keep it looking amazing. And if you stay on to the end of the call, I also have a free gift. For that. Ah, good morning, Ruth. So that is what we are doing today. And... Before I jump into it all, are there any questions or anything that you would like to say about why you are here today before we jump into it completely? All right, let's get into it then. Okay, so this is Canva. It's canva.com. It is... And if you're not familiar with Canva, actually, if you could drop a Y in the chat or an N for no, if you have used Canva before and are at least a little bit passingly familiar with it. Okay, so we've got some we've got some people who are familiar with it. Excellent. This is going to be a good class today. So Canva.com. You will need to create an account to use it. I actually have a personal and a business one. And you can try Canva Pro for free. So let's actually talk a little bit about Canva Pro while we are, while this little pop-up is up. What you get with Canva Pro is, and that's the paid version of it, and we're going to talk a little later about how nonprofits can get access to Canva Pro, but you get over a million photos, videos, and elements with premium fonts and templates. And we'll show you in a moment what that exactly means. You can use their magic resize background remover and pardon me, animations. And it also lets you create a brand kit, content planner, extra folders, and has sto extra storage with it. So there are definitely benefits to it for, for normal people and businesses, not nonprofits. I believe it's about $18 Australian per month 
which isn't too bad. I think it's about twelve dollars, ten to twelve dollars American. No idea what the conversion is, the Eli for Canada, but there are some definite benefits to the pro version. But everything that we're going to cover today is going to be the free version, so you don't have to pay anything to do whatever we're doing today. So we're going to close out of that, and. Yeah, Canva was actually created by a couple of Aussies who were frustrated that there was no real graphic design things out there to help people who weren't actual graphic designers. So they created Canva and it turned into a multi-million dollar business. It's awesome. Okay, so this is the Canva homepage. There's some things show up in a couple of different ways here, like the templates. You just hover over that and it gives you all kinds of fun stuff. To choose from. Same with features. You can actually print products from here, but we're not going to get into that. I just thought it was fun. You have home, you have your projects, things that people have shared with you, and other things that we're not going to go into. Your, you also have quick jumps to things like videos, presentations, and all of these different types of templates that you can use. You're going to see recent designs down here. So things that you've created recently, and you'll see how the stuff that we do today will show up here. You can pick a design from here, or you can go create a design up here. But to keep things simple today, I'm going to come up to templates and I'm going to go to Facebook post. And... It give, you can pick different types of things that you want. If you wanted a simple one, it's going to change to simple templates. And then you can create different themes off of it. You can also select just the free ones. And we want it to be a post. There we go. So what we did is we picked a style, a theme, and the price, which is free. So now all of the templates that I that they're going to show me are all going to be free. Just out of curiosity, can I ask what nonprofits are you guys with? What is the industry that you work with? Okay, we've got a couple of churches and some disability education. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's say that I like this one. So I'm going to use this template. Yep, that's really cool. Let's go to a customize this template. And get rid of that. Okay, so I like the quote. But let's say maybe I don't like some other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I can go over to help me. Let's go to Okay. So I want a picture of a cat because that's going to be Okay, and, and you'll notice as I scroll through these that some of them have this little crown on them that when I hover over it, it says pro. And that just means that it's a paid element. So if I want to use that particular picture, I have to pay for it. And I'm going to grab that. And I'm just going to pop it right in there. And let's see, maybe I want to just move that down here. And let's say I just want to let me do that. Okay. So let's say that maybe I just don't like the gears. For this one. And I'm actually just going to take that one in. Okay. Now, when I drop this in here, there's a couple of things that I want you to notice about it. Okay. The first thing is that there's that bounding box on it. And if I want to resize it, I just grab a corner and I bring it down just like that. You'll also notice this little arrow thing, circle thing here. If I click on that and hold it, I can rotate it.
And you'll also notice some things up at the top here where you have color, edit image, crop, flip, and animate. I'm not going to get into the animate and stuff now, but the edit image lets you give it some effects. But the one I really wanted to show you was the, you'll notice that it has that black block here because it's black here. So if I come over here, I can pick another color and I can change the color. Everybody with me there? Okay. Yep, perfect. Okay. And then if I want to, let's say I want to duplicate it and I want to put another one over here, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to copy, click again and paste, and then drag and drop and rotate. Now you'll notice that the image is on top of the text, and I don't want that. So if I hit, I can hit either hit position and move backward or right click on it and put send backward to send it back a step. Uh, thanks, Eli. I just figured out how to do the giant cursor the other day. And if you didn't notice, when I left click, it turns pink. And when I right click, it turns green, just to give it a little bit more of a... Now, the other thing that's on here is that we have some text. So let's say... And okay, when you click on existing text, the first click will give you the bounding box. So it like so that if I wanted to move the box, it's there. So you always want to like double click inside to make sure that you're actually on the actual text when you go to change it, otherwise it doesn't work. So we're, I'm gonna just change this to say my website at, okay, so that is my, my Instagram handle. So you'll notice that because it's longer than the other text, it actually wrapped around. So I have a couple of choices here. The easiest one is just to grab that little side and pull it so it's like that and then bring it down so it's visible. Up here, I can change the font. I can change the size of the font. So if I wanted to grow that a little bit, take it up to 20. There's that, do that again. And the other thing is that if you see where it has the A with the rainbow under it, I can click that and I can change my font color. I can also bold it. Nope. Okay. That doesn't look very good. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to actually make it black because that then becomes obvious. And I just realized they put a typo in it. <laughs> There we go. And this one we're going to go with. Boom. So that is a quick and dirty way to customize a template. The probably the most challenging thing to know with this is that when we go, I'm going to go back to photos. That if you want to change the picture, you can do two things with this. So if I wanted to, I could take and just grab this and just drag it in. And it, you see how when I hover over it, it snaps into the entire picture and replaces that. or if I just click on it, it goes on top of it. Now, while I've got this here, I can either resize it by grabbing the corner and doing that. Or if I wanted to crop it, I grab one of the little lines on the side and I move it in. And it actually crops the photograph. And then if I want to, oops, no. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. I don't believe there is a spell check 
Lori, but when we get to text, we'll talk about that a little bit more. So there are different things. Oh, the other thing is, let's say that I wanted to do this for one thing, but not the other. Up here, you can go duplicate page and it copies it. So let's say on the first one, I didn't want that. On the second one, I do. So this way, if you want to do different versions of things, it's a really easy way to keep track of your different versions. I didn't realize this until I'd been using Canva for a while and I was playing with different designs for my business card. So I had 15 different files before I realized I could do them all in pages in the same file and keep it a bit cleaner that way. You can also just add a, a page if you wanted to do a different design within it. And, and yeah, so then if you decide you don't want it, just hit the delete page, done, easy done. Okay. Oh, I also wanted to draw your attention up here where it says Green Road Motivation Quote. That's the name of the template. So if I click in there, I can rename it. And you'll notice the little cloud over here with the three dots in it. And now it says all changes saved. Drop a Y in the chat if you remember the days when you would spend hours working on a project, especially a design project or a really massive document, and you forgot to save regularly and you're almost done, you're ready to hit print, and suddenly the computer crashes or runs out or the laptop ran out of power and you lost the entire thing and had to recreate the entire thing. Anybody remember those days? <laughs> yeah, there are few things that will make you want to pick up your computer and crush it against the wall like that happening. That is one of the beauties of Canva is it auto saves. So every couple of minutes, it's or actually every time you make a change, it's going to update and save your project so that you never, ever lose your project. That's also one of the benefits to working on a cloud-based application. Okay. So any questions on adapting a template before we move on? Sorry, I just spilled some of my coffee. Okay. I guess you guys are good. Awesome. All right. So we've done that. Okay. So let's talk about photos a little bit. These are all stock photos from Canva. The other thing that you can do is go to, let me just grab up my images there we go okay so the so you can use all of their stock images there are a lot of resources where you can get royalty free images there's a, a bunch of, of websites and things where you can do that so you can go to uploads and actually let me add a page here all right so if you want to add a an image there are two ways, or actually three ways to do it. You can either go upload media and upload it from your file manager. You can drag and drop something over here, or you can just drag it into what you're working on and you'll see it automatically go into your library. Either one works. And if you want to, again, you want to change the size or if you want to crop. Easy done. Yeah, uns Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels are the three that I tend to use for that. So I'll just drop that in Bay and Pexels. Along with Unsplash, those are the, the three websites that I use to get images and music and things like that. Pixabay is really great for music if you want to underlay like a little video or something, but again, that's really advanced and we're not going to get into that today. Oh, I didn't know about that one, Eli. Thank you. Okay. So that's it. The main thing with the images, everybody with me so far, or any questions? Okay. Excellent. Because I feel like we're moving pretty quickly. So we're going to get through an awful lot today. The next thing that I wanted to show you, that's one of my favorites is the elements tab. Okay. Not only can you find photos here, but they have little graphics of things. 
and with the search, you can search thematically. Like, for example, I was looking for cat paws, and it gives me all kinds of different options. It also says recommendations, and you can see all. So this is things that are similar to what I was just looking at. And you can also do, put him on there too. Oh, cat ears, I like that. They have little videos that you can do. It's searching by cats because I have that in the thing, but it would, if I took that out, it would just show you everything that they've got. For example, here we go. Okay. And put the cat back in there. All right. So we've got graphics, we've got videos, there's even audio. I don't think I put the share audio, so I can't share that part here. But these are fun. The audios can be fun. They have some um, decent music. They've got different things that are just awesome that way. And oh, yeah. So let me go back to here. And you'll notice that when you're not searching for anything in particular, you have a whole bunch of stuff up here. You've also got different topics going down here. So really quickly on the tour of that, you, the ones that you've recently used are going to show up first. You get lines and shapes. Now, these are really good. And let's do a see all there. So let's say I want to do that one. There we go. And then grab some text. And I want to do that subheading. Okay. Make that a little bit bigger. Now, if you want to move it when it's like that, just make sure you get that little crosshairs thing and then you can move that. Okay, so this is good, but I don't like the background. So I'm going to select the heart. I'm going to go to the gray and I'm going to change that to a purple. So th that's one of the, th that's really what these elements are good for is for highlighting text. Or if I wanted to, let's say I want to get rid of that one. No. Control Z is also your best friend. Okay, but let's say I want to go here. I want to go to the front. And I want to go. Just like that. Okay. It highlights images, it highlights text or other elements. So if you're doing a design where you have a picture in the background, you've got some other information, let's say it's for an event and you want to really highlight the date, time and place, you would do some kind of shape in the background and then put that information on top of it so that it would really pop and catch people's eyes to make sure they don't miss that piece of information. So that is what the shapes are really good for. The lines can be fun. So I wanted, I wanted to show you this. This is really neat. So you'll see that the line is selected. Up here, you have some different options. You can change the color of the line. You can change the heaviness of the line. And I love that you can also change what type of line it is right now. It's a regular line. You may make it dash broken. You can also grab the end of it and make it a little bit longer. And you can change the direction to back to that. It's easier to see. And then I love these two lines here. These are the end points. So if we go and we go here and then we change this one to say that. And you can change the end points to whatever you want, which is really cool. I personally just love that. Okay. So we have the lines and shapes. There are all different kinds of graphics. There are stickers that you can use. So if you're doing like a Facebook post, these can be fun.
to use the little moving gift things. And I'll bail the guy who created the gift. He died over the weekend. Little baby videos, if you want to include. That's a bit more advanced, so that could be another day's discussion. But I also wanted to show you a couple of things down here. So the charts... So if you are doing like any kind of a presentation or you just want to show, let me add a page here. Let's say you're doing a Facebook post where you're showing that your organization has been growing. You can throw in something like that. Or if you want to show that so many people are using a certain thing, you can do something like this. And down here, you can change the total number of items, how many, whatever that percentage is, the space in between them, or even what it is that you're showing. So it's really fun. You can have a lot of fun with those. Table, same thing, not really gonna get into those. Now the frames and the grids do some very similar things. So let's say that we have we are doing that the event that's that's coming up and we're going to go to let's go to it. Right. I was hoping to find one of grandma going but all right. All right. So let, let's do this one. Now I want, so you know how the image covered the entire page the first time? The little graphic for the frame, it goes right in there. So these, the frames are used in the ones that have this like little weird background look on them. That those are the ones that the images will snap into. So let's go. put something cuter in there. And you can change them out very easily. And so if you had like your background on here and actually. If you click on the more tab and then go to background. You can actually change your background to anything you want. So you see how that really makes that pop. Okay. So if you want, again, it's used for. It's used for enhancement and to really set off another image. Yep, the frames are amazing. I absolutely love those. They're one of my favorite elements. I use them all the time. As you can see, there's all kinds of different shapes that you can use to make any kind of highlights that you want. So if you wanted a little, what it would look like on a mobile phone thing. And then we come back and we're going to do something like that. You can use these to do all different kinds of, sorry, I, I have not had enough coffee yet this morning, all kinds of emphasis or different design features. So if I wanted to take that and then I wanted to just rotate it a little bit and then I'll rotate this one a little bit. So you can do some fun design stuff like that. The frames are great. The other thing I wanted to show you in this same section is the grid. Those Facebook posts where It'll let you set up how you want. If you're going to post a whole bunch of pictures and it's like, hey, use this thing where you can show like six different ones at once instead of just one picture, one or two pictures, and then 20 more. So you can take and create your own little design thing. So let's say we did, let's do this one. So you'll see that it creates four different images of frames. Okay, so then you come back to your elements. And we're, we're going to want to use this little guy here. Let's go to see all. And let's use this little guy here. This little guy there. And the puppy, because everybody loves puppies. Boom. And so you can create a post like this that just makes it really easy to highlight whatever images you want. 
you could then maybe go back to shape. And now with the text, you have headings, subheadings, a little bit of body text, or you can use any of these custom ones that they like, that, that, they, that they have. So you could do something like that, go away. And you can come in and you can edit it. Do something like that. Bring it down. Oops. Yeah, come on. Why are you not moving for me? Sometimes, oh, there we go. Okay. And you can do something like that. And let's say I want to change the color of it. Because that's really obnoxious. There we go. That looks a bit better. And I want to make that a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make the this one a bit smaller as well. And we need to change that. Boom. Oh, except I think we need. I think we have a cat uh, masquerading as a dog, <laughs> but you get the idea with that. So you can really play with it and make that your own. That's also the hallmark of a designer is the design is never finished. You just run out of time because you're always tweaking it and everything else. Okay. So any questions on using the elements, especially the things like the frames and the like the circles and squares and things like that. Any questions on that or anything that you're loving about any of that? Okay. So we are actually doing really well. I know the the snap feature, Bruce, is one of the best parts of Canva. It takes a little bit to get used to playing with it, but once you really get the hang of it, it can make life just so much easier and so amazing. Okay, so the next thing, and it's actually one of the last things we're going to cover, and then we're going to talk about Canva Pro resources for nonprofits and how to post to Facebook. So the head, let me change the background here because this is just annoying. So on the text, we have headings. We have subheadings and we have body text, which is just three different ways of doing it. Over here, we have the default uh, font, which is the open sans light. If you click the down arrow, it'll give you all kinds of options. And it tells you which ones are the paid ones because they have the little crown. So you can change that. Do all different kinds of things with it. Now you'll notice that on some of them, the, the bold, italic, and or are faded out, which means that not all of them has the ability to do that. So you got to keep an eye on that. So if it's something that you want bolded, you have to be able to bold it. You have to see that you can do that. So you have to choose one that lets you do that. Some of them are naturally bolded. And, it, and I like the fact that it lets you just try it out to see what it looks like. You can also change the font size to make it larger or smaller, depending on what you need. You can also change the font color. Yeah, that's not very visible. 
make it hot pink. There we go. So that's, and then of course you can rotate it if you want to. And under effects, this is a slightly more advanced technique, but I know you guys can handle it. It's some creative juice to drink. Ruth, that's called coffee. But if you go to effects, remember back in the 90s when curved text was all the rage? Let's go back to the 90s. <laughs> you can curve the text and you'll see that it has a curve thing down here at the bottom. So you can make it more or less or even the other direction if you want. And you can take it to whatever level that you want on that, which is really fun. And that's just under effects. We're not going to worry about animate here. If we come back to text, or actually, let's go here. Move that out of the way a little bit. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to move this down a little bit. So another thing that's fun is you can change your where it's aligned to left, right, center, or flushed on both sides, which I forget what it's called. But I also wanted to show you the list. Okay, and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit that. And if I come over here and do that, oops, actually, need to, and then I can align it like that. Everybody with me on doing the text and creating lists and things like that? Okay, excellent. Just want to make sure I'm not going too fast because it's one of those things that my mother always said, anything's easy if you know how. So I try not to go too fast. And yeah, so that is pretty much it for that. Now, doing the... Sharing is really like the next one. All right, so we're going to get out of there. You can share this. Yeah, they, they've actually just changed the this menu up here. They've made this slightly different. But you can go to down. What I usually do is download and then put it into my scheduling app with the text and everything else that I want from here. But you can download from here. And the thing that I like too is let's say I only want the first page, not everything that I've done. And it shows you little thumbnails of everything that's in the document. I don't want all of it. I only want page one. I say down and, and then I say download and it lets me, okay, why this is downloading as a video, I'm not sure. So we're going to, but it lets you decide where you want it to go. And we're going to cancel that. Out of, but if you were to download the entire document, it would show up as a zip file, and then you would just have to extract out of the zip file. Now, if I wanted to share this, I can add people here and, and restrict it to only the people added or anyone with the link, just like in Google Forms. And I can share this to my social media and it gives me a bunch of different social medias to do. The only thing is with the free version, you cannot schedule it, but with the pro version, you can. So I'm not going to do too much about that at the moment, but I do want to share my top three. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. My top three tips on how to make everything look amazing. So let's go back uh, over here and we're going to go there. Okay. The first thing is with design, less is more. Just keep it simple. Keep it easy on the eyes and keep it simple to read. So use your images effectively. Don't overwhelm your viewers and keep everything short and sweet. Just remember the KISS method. Keep it simple, sweetheart. That is really the main thing to do. Okay, we are, we've got about 15 minutes left. So I want to check in and see if you have any questions about anything. But I'd also love it if you could drop in the chat any highlights for you today. Is there anything that you have uh, heard or learned that is that was maybe a little new or maybe you'd forgotten about or you just found really exciting? So I'd, I'd love to, to hear that. 
the charts are wicked easy. And as you see it, saw it come up, came up with that item on the left where you just change your data and you just plug in your numbers and it just boom, done. Easiest thing in the world to make so much easier than doing it in Excel. Ruth says, How much writing should be on a post? It really depends on what the post is about. On the image itself, I would say keep it minimal, only the absolute necessities. If you're doing a post on an event, obviously you would want the name, the name of the event, the date, time, and place, and maybe a little bit about the purpose and where to go to register. That's like your minimum stuff that you need for an event. And then I would just, if you want to put anything else on there, face painting and childcare available, whatever, but just do it in such a way that you're not really overwhelming people. And remember that a lot of people are, most people honestly are looking at these on a smart device, like a, a smartphone. So your screen is going to be very small. So you want to make sure that they're going to be able to see it. So that's the main. Yep. Optimal sizes for posts are, are that. John, thank you so much for sharing that. To be honest, though, most people don't understand what that means. I personally cannot visualize that size. So just it, it's just you have to practice with it and you have to see it for yourself whether or not it's working. It really becomes a, a, a bit of a feel thing. And yeah, so it's so there's the, the honest truth, unfortunately, is there's no right answer to that. But yeah, so that's that. Is there any other questions or standout moments that anyone would like to share? Okay, just go here. Then I'd like to actually share some resources with you. The first, and, and this is for specifically for nonprofits, and Bruce is going to drop the uh, links in the chat for me. So the first one is going to be your screen. Boom. Okay. So the first one is this is the Canva for nonprofits overview. It talks about what they do, what it's for, how it can be a powerful tool for nonprofits. Okay, it talks a little bit about what Canva gives to you, which is templates, images, graphics, fonts, uh, brand coloring, uh, one graphic into many with the resize folders. Full And folders are great because it helps you stay organized and it lets people find what it is that you want them to see. And GIFs and all kinds of things like that. And yeah. So there's templates, stories, Facebook posts, present. You can do almost every, almost anything on Canva. It's really a lot of fun. The second link I wanted to show you is the eligibility guidelines, how to know if your organization is eligible to get Canva Pro. So I'm not sure. I think this might be a American designation, the 501. C3, you, ha you have to have like a 501c4, 501c6, or other nonprofit statuses do not qualify. Okay, these this is does not qualify. So you have to have a 501k to 12 schools, colleges, and universities do not qualify for the Canva uh, charitable, but they do have an educate Canva for education for people who are in that sector. Commercial and trade associations without charitable aims. <clears throat> aims. People that do qualify are registered nonprofits, social impact organizations, and public health organizations and government entities. And if you scroll down, this, this is what you need. So, for example, the US, Canada, and Australia. So if you're registered with the ACNC and you're tax exempt through the ATO, then you would uh, be able to apply. Yep. And as and Bruce just said uh, in the chat that it does require you to provide evidence of your nonprofit and tax exempt status. So maybe check with your financial people in your organization before you try to apply because that'll help make that process go a lot more smoothly for you. There is a... website on 
Canva for nonprofits. And these are suggestions of how to use Canva and some different ways and articles and things that some of the articles are really interesting, like nonprofit marketing, social media, and things like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a, a see all button that gives you a heck of a lot more than that. They also have some resources for you. Let's grab that one. So this is the, the resources one, Bruce. And this is all just resources that they have. If you work with uh, crisis response management, like, for example, we had flooding very recently in several parts of Australia. We also had those bushfires that the whole world was praying for us for a couple of years ago that was really scary. There are templates specifically designed for crisis response, things with stopping hate things, different marketing things, and then some nonspecific stuff. So there's a lot of different resources here. You don't have to feel like you're reinventing the wheel, especially when it comes to nonprofit design work. And specifically talking about that oops, a crisis work, there is actually a page specifically devoted to, it's called their crisis hub. And so to, to answer, I'm sorry, who was it? Ruth's question about writing. Some of these might give you a good idea. Now, like some of these that have a lot of writing on them are more like flyers rather than social media posts. But looking at the templates can give you a really good idea. Like, for example, the one in the middle of the blue, that's a really good social media post because it's colorful. So it's going to catch the eye and hopefully stop the scroll. And it's enough text to give you information with a call to action. And then, all right, so I just wanted to share those resources with you. And let me stop that. Let me bring this back up. Okay. And I wanted to say a little thank you for joining me today. So drop a Y in the chat if you would like to have over 20 social media templates that are ready to use. All you have to do is customize them send them out. Drop a Y in the chat if that's something that you might be interested in. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I always like stuff like that too. So the way to get that is to just email me at hello at createyourchange.com.au and I will be more than happy to send that to you. And just put template in the subject line so that I know what that's about. And I will get that back to you within 48 hours. And this is like the, the official wrap up, which is the thank you for joining me today. And with, with love and gratitude, live your passion. The world needs you. And again, I am your host, host, Kat Milner, founder, owner, and chief communication ninja of Create Your Change. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I do small group mentoring. I do business and nonprofit mentoring for things like Canva and multiple other projects, everything within Google Drive, Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, you name it, I teach it. So if you would like to know more about what I do here at Create Your Change, or you would like to set up a, possibly a time for me to work with you and or your team, please feel free to set up a complimentary, no obligation chat with me. Bruce has kindly dropped that link in the chat, and I would be more than happy to have a conversation about how I might be able to be of service to you. And I want to, oh, no, not that button. Uh, almost stopped the recording. <laughs> so I want to thank you again so much for joining me today. We've got about four minutes left if there's any final questions or comments. And I want to thank you again for, for taking the your valuable time to join with me today and wish you the best on your day. And also, if you just have any general Canva questions, feel free to email me as well. I'm more than happy to answer those. So back to you, Bruce. Okay, apparently Bruce is muted. So I'll do the commercial. Since I'm also one of the hosts of the event, I'll do the commercial for next week.
Well, it's our next session about de-jargonizing your copywriting. And the link is there in the, the chat. So definitely join us for de-jargonizing because sometimes what we know, we forget that not everybody else knows. And it can be really helpful for people to have it put in plain language. And so it's all about converting things that you know and are familiar with and converting that into normal language that everybody can understand. And yes, Eli, don't forget to tell your friends to come and join us as well. And feel free to share that link that's in the that was remarkable. Thank you so much, Kat. I really appreciate that. And thanks also to your co-hosts, including Bruce and the others, for putting this all together.